Yeah, Polkadot staking dashboard. Uh, so just out of interest, how many people here are actually staking on Polkadot or KSM right now? Cool. Most people. Is that native or liquid staking? Liquid? <laughs> okay. My focus is on native staking. So we've developed a new dashboard. It's, um, it's a brand new front-end experience. Um, some of the goals, we want to give users a great staking experience first and foremost. We think this is quite overdue in our space. Uh, we want to be seen as leaders on the application side amongst our friends in other blockchain ecosystems. I think it's accepted now we've been leading the system side for quite a while. We want to be on the same place on the front end. Uh, we want to be easy to use and provide users guidance where necessary. We want to stay away from like wikis and long documents and all that stuff. And we want to engage everyone in this project. So not just the dot token holders themselves, but validators, chain explorers, extensions, etc. So we want to leverage all the assets in the ecosystem to just create a great experience. So we're very aware of the fact that staking will be the entry point into the Polkadot ecosystem for, for many users. So we need to get this right from the start. And luckily, I think we've got a, a lot more things right than wrong. So. Let's define the problem quickly. I'm sure many of us are aware of this app, Polkadot.js apps. And it just happened to have this super bold font when I was preparing my screenshots. <laughs> but it just amplifies our problem here. Um, but JS apps is a great tool. I use it on a daily basis. And I think it's still a relevant developer tool. But this is the issue. JS apps is a developer tool and was never intended to be an end user facing application. So yeah, Kian said it quite well. It doesn't matter how good Polkadot is if users cannot use it. So this is the problem we need to solve. Um, yeah, so for a while we've been sending non-technical users to JS apps, pretending everything's fine. And more often than not, they give up. They go to a centralized exchange. Or in some cases, they stake on other blockchains. Um, so we think we have a solution to this. and. We've started with an industry-leading staking experience. It's still early stage, disclaimer. Uh, this is what it looks like. Simple interface, side menus, accounts at the top. Um, so let's go through some of the features. So it supports Kusama and West End, as well as Polkadot Mainnet. Uh, fully themed network colors, logos, etc. We have a dark mode, and it probably won't be this dark on the final release. I don't know if you can see it in the back. <laughs> it's pretty dark. Uh, but it looks great. That's the main thing. Full screen size support. So we want to support big monitors as well as mobile devices. I personally like using the, the, wind, the squared window with a minimized side menu. Um, but we're hoping the mobile support will give wallets and extensions more incentive to begin supporting uh, smaller form factors as well. So this is important. Built-in extension support. So sorry, SubWallet. Um, we ran out of time to integrate SubWallet. So we have Talisman and Polkadot.js built in, as well as a read-only account feature. So I can just import any formatted address and have, a, have that account in the dashboard on a read-only basis. And this is one of those accounts. So quite a big one here, 6 million dot being staked. Um, and it turns out it's the Akala's L dot nominator. <laughs> intelligent account picker. So we don't just want a list of accounts to choose from. We want to intelligently um, group them by a, by a staking status, whether they're in a nomination pool. Um, and if an account's stash or controller is missing, we automatically import them as well. So they don't need to be present in the wallet or the extension. Predictable UX. This has been one of the main themes of the design. We want to keep the placement of elements consistent throughout the dashboard. So we do stuff like empty graphs, default values, disabled buttons. So this might sound a bit wrong. Why would we clutter our user interface with these dead elements? Um, but it works. So if we can look at these two screenshots. The first one is completely inactive, no accounts connected. Uh, the bottom one is a fully active staking position. But the interface remains consistent and predictable. There is nothing new for the user to learn as the app state changes. So that's important. 
Easy validator browsing, another low-hanging fruit we've tried to address. Um, we've gone through for, for a paginated approach, because browsers are really bad at just rendering super long lists of validators. Easy access to commissions to um, oversubscribe status. This, uh, this thing here is the minimum reward bond you need for a validator. It changes every era, but it's still a good metric. Um, yeah, we can save our favorites, view metrics, era point history, and some good filters for nominators. We've included all the ones they th we think are important for, for choosing validators, such as like the missing identity. Nominators value that one quite a lot as well. Yeah, and all this comes together to create a very easy way to start staking. A uh, step-by-step process. It should just take a couple of minutes to start. Keep track of the progress, no matter whether they're on the app. Um, yeah, and we have some good ways to nominate validators, which I'll get to in a second. Yeah, nomination pool support. On-chain staking pools. It's a massive feature that's already on Kusama. And we're looking to support nomination pools throughout the app. So we can already ha do most of the things, bond, membership, claiming rewards, etc. Um, and owners of pools can change roles as they want. So the minimum bond to create a, a pool is just one KSM. So nomination pools will probably become a more used feature than regular staking as time goes by, just because of its low barrier to entry. So it should be treated as a first-class citizen throughout the dashboard. And we'll continue to integrate it um, in various sections. And Hamid, he's been progressing nomination pools. He's taken a great lead. Um, he just jumped into the code base as though he wrote it from scratch. It's been great. So thank you, Hamid, for that. OK, leveraging the ecosystem. Um, yeah, we have some great services in our space. Um, Explorer APIs, historical accounts. Um, these can be labeled as centralized APIs or APIs with a single point of failure. But we want to be able to utilize them, but not necessarily rely on them. So we do this via toggleable services. Um, but after, I, after the Kusamaverse presentation yesterday, we should rename this as plugins to keep things consistent. I think plugins is better than toggleable services. But, um, but services do not impact critical staking functions and extrinsics. You can turn them all off, and it won't impact the staking at all. So we want this, these plugins to be complementary to the Node RPC data-driven dashboard. That's, that's primarily what it is. Uh, finally, we have uh, an assistant. It currently supports definitions and links to articles externally. Um, but we can invoke it from various sections. It just gives us what we want. And then we can just move it away. And it's all in-app, so it doesn't disturb the user experience at all. So yeah, I'm just going to do a quick demo. Um, this is the Polkadot network. It's going to switch to West End. So everything updates, hopefully, in a few seconds. There's no need to refresh the page or anything. Um, it's going to switch to an account that's got uh, Westies available. Stake and start staking. So yeah, very simple process. We, we choose the controller we want. Um, all of our accounts are here. We need the accidental deposit to start staking. The reward destination. Uh, so we have a few options here. We can nominate just by generating the most profitable validators. Super simple. Or we can choose from favorites. So I can just jump into the validator list. Um, let's just exclude everything apart from the oversubscribed. Let's pick a couple. And we can go back. Nothing, it's totally as we left the, the setup. Um, so yeah, we can, we can add favorites. And if I'm not so keen on the ones that were generated automatically, I could maybe just select a couple and remove them. So we're trying to aim for this like generation method of choosing nominators, but also have the granular control necessary if users want to use that as well. So bonding, um, we have various thresholds. So if we don't know what the active threshold means, for example, we can open the assistant. It's the amount needed to be actively nominating. It doesn't guarantee rewards, but it guarantees we'll be active, as the user might be oversubscribed. OK, 
Okay, so let's just do the maximum short summary and start staking. Shows a very easy password to remember on stage. <laughs> yep, everything's done. It just very quickly, um, I'm now waiting for my active nominations. They should become active in the next era. And we can add bond more if you want to, etc. It's all there. Um, yeah, so Stake and Dashboard is in beta right now. We'll continue to develop and improve. All these things are like stuff we still need to do, not what we have done. So I've highlighted some validator focused things here. Um, so that's probably going to be the focus of our next sprint, really focusing on validator discovery and basically showing validators we care. So a couple of shout outs to other projects. Uh, where is Jonas? You see, I think. Where is he? He's gone. <laughs> where, is, where are you? Oh, there he is. <laughs> we'll be um, implementing the validator selection algorithm like deeply into the dashboard to improve the discovery process for validators. So to learn more about that, go to Jonas's talk. And Chain API. So Chain API will unlock some big potentials um, for a multi-chain front-end world. So we want staking dashboard to be another flagship use case of Cappy. I think Harry's doing another talk in New York as well. Yeah, finally, um, it's now live on Polkadot Network, this URL. Uh, this is quite a big deal, I think. It's the first major end user facing application on Polkadot Network. It's been great to work with the Web3 guys, and we want to do more of it in the future. Yep, yeah, go check it out. Thank you. Cool. Um, oh, I see a question growing in your mind. Question here? <laughs> they don't need to run. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Just here. <laughs> Sorry to point. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, are hardware wallets uh, supported? Say again? Hardware wallets, are they supported? I can't hear you. Say again? Hardware wallets, like a ledger. Wallets. Hardware wallets. Um, not currently. We want to support more in the future, like sub wallets next, and then we'll look into hardware wallets and things. But, yeah. okay. but the read-only thing is really useful for, for cold storage wallets. You can just port, import the accounts by that. Yeah. Uh, is the light client uh, option already activated? Yeah, light client. We, we want to get around to putting Substrate Connect in there as well. So that's, that's coming imminently as well. So that's a good point. Yeah. Did I see again? Nope. Cool. Just kidding. Uh, hi, thanks for hi. talking a good tool. Uh, I got two questions actually. Can I ask two? Yeah, by all means. Um, did you look while developing on YieldScan? Sorry, Yield the audio is not very good. <laughs> There's a kind of similar tool which has been around since Kusama started, I guess. It's YieldScan.app. YieldScan, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, another yeah. question. So could you tell more about the algorithm of choosing the validators, the filters? and whatnot. The audio is really bad, I can't hear, sorry. Uh, algorithm of choosing the validators, suggestion algorithm. The algorithm validators. of choosing the validators. Say again, algorithm of choosing validators? Uh, the one built into the app? Yeah. Oh, it's super simple. We're just relying on those filters on the validator screen, basically, and we're just filtering out all the validators. That's how we're doing right now. But we want to experiment with, say, having a subset of inactive validators as well as active and maybe allowing users to toggle the ratio between those, just so we can promote some the inactive ones as well. And that will probably be a default option in the future. Yeah. But I think the selection algorithm will do a great job at solving this problem. Any last questions? Cool. So you said you have some off-chain uh, data, some charts get data that are not coming directly from the chain, right? Off-chain data? Oh, um, Indexing, indexed data. Yeah, currently we're relying on like subscan for historical payment records and Binance Spot API for price feeds. Um, 
But yeah, these are all layered on top of the, the node data. It's primarily a node-driven app. Yeah. Thank you.